This is number 12 in a series of teachings entitled Supernatural Foundations. If you want deeper teachings, teachings that are much more revelatory in the supernatural, please go to Tony Kemp uh, Ministries, the website, turn on to the store, you'll see the School of the Supernatural. There we have TV, 10 DVDs. Um, and we, we, we declare the word and we demonstrate the spirit and the power of God. You'll see the sick healed. You'll see miracles. You'll see uh, word of knowledge, signs and wonders. You'll see the manifestations of not just uh, the word of God, but the presence and the glory of God as well as the power of God. And the teachings are much deeper and it costs $230. I promise you that it will help you to move in the supernatural. Uh, the last session we were talking about the uh, speaking in tongues. And Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 14. He said, I'll pray with my understanding and I'll pray in the spirit. He said, I I'll bless God with the spirit. He said, worship God in the spirit. Give thanks in the spirit. And so I want to tell you this, sp spend as much time praying in the Holy Spirit as absolutely possible. And you're going to find out that you're going to grow in the spirit. You will increase your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 14 says this, Now may you know the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus, and have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And when you pray in tongues, you'll have the communion of the Spirit. You'll have the partnership of the Spirit. You'll have a participation of the Spirit. You'll have friendship with the Spirit. You'll get to know the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life and in your ministry. I'm giving you a key to the supernatural. Listen to me closely. Now we're going to talk about the next foundation doctrine, which is the laying on of hands. And in Luke's gospel, chapter number uh, three, or number four, it says in verse 40, And when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with different diseases brought them to Jesus, and Jesus laid his hands on every single one of them and healed them. The reason that uh, you have the doctrine of the laying on of hands is when you lay hands upon the sick, Jesus said they will recover. Look now what is, is in uh, Mark's gospel, chapter 16, verse 18. The latter part of the verse, Jesus says to his disciples, you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So in other words, you tell the person who is sick, Jesus is your healer. You give them the word of God concerning healing. And then you lay hands on them and the word says that they will recover. The Greek word means they will get better and better till they're completely well. So they must believe that the power of God is entering into their body and God's power is working to make them better and better until they're completely well. They must believe to the point where they're completely healed. When it is healing, it is gradual. It's supernatural, but it gradually happens over time. When it's a miracle, it can happen instantaneously or in seconds. And so one of the reasons for the laying on of hands is to minister healing. Now that's not the only reason for the laying on of hands. You can lay hands on people to minister deliverance. And let me give you a scripture for that because uh, it's uh, very much uh, in the Word of God. And so um, here we have the same situation, but now we're in Mark's gospel, and it says in uh, chapter chapter 1, verse 32, at evening, when the sun had set, notice that, they brought to Jesus all who were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils, all the city was gathered together at the door, for he had healed many that were sick of different diseases, and he cast out many devils. Now, the scripture that we just read was the same situation. Jesus laid his hands upon the sick, and they became well. Jesus laid his hands upon those that were demonized, and the demons departed out of them, and they were delivered. And so I have seen Jesus deliver people who were uh, depressed. They, they, had, they had a, um, um, you know, everybody gets depressed with a sort of a situation. But what I'm talking about is chronic, ongoing depression even when things are good, they're still depressed. And it could be caused by a spirit of darkness. And I have seen Jesus expel that demon from a person's life, and the person no longer has a problem with depression. I have seen uh, uh, 
persons who have psychosis or what may even be called schizophrenia and when that demon was expelled that person was free from that psychosis they were free from auditory hallucinations or visual hallucinations they were free from demon activity because Jesus is a mighty deliverer there have been people who have been healed of bipolar disease there have been people who have been uh, healed of alcoholism they've been delivered uh, from alcoholism and uh, listen uh, true alcoholism is demonic you, you, you can lose your marriage over it you can lose your family members over it you can lose your job over it and if people don't get delivered sometimes they lose their, li lose their lives over it and so the, the demon activity has to do with the lust for alcoholism but I've seen Jesus deliver people from alcoholism and they never drank again I'm talking about the mighty power of Jesus Christ and drug addiction is the same way it's it's a uh, it's pharmakeia. It's it's a form of witchcraft. Uh, Galatians 5. If you read it there in the original language, you'll see that. And when this person is delivered from drug addiction, when this person is delivered from the spirit of witchcraft, from that that pharmakeia, the person never uses drugs again. So I've seen Jesus do that. And so Jesus can heal people uh, uh, from sicknesses and diseases. And believe me, alcoholism is a sickness. Uh, drug addiction is a disease. And Jesus has 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 uh, driven out these demon spirits and set people from free from alcoholism, as well as drug addiction, as well as many other kinds of demonic activity. We've seen people set free, lay hands upon them, and uh, the demons uh, depart from them, and they're free. So another reason for the laying on of hands is to drive out demons in addition to healing the sick. What other reasons w uh, are there for the laying on of hands? Well, one of the reasons for the laying on of hands can be to uh, minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, that's also uh, in Scripture. And so um, let me see if I can find that for you. Okay. And... Um, Um, so turn to the book of Acts chapter 19 and uh, um, here the apostle Paul finds some people who believed in the um, uh, they believed in Jesus they got baptized with John's baptism and then Paul uh, baptized them in the name of Jesus in verse 5 and then in verse 6 it says when Paul laid his hands upon them the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And so you can lay hands upon people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they can speak in other languages. Also, um, hands can be laid upon a person for them to receive spiritual gifts. You can see this in the book of Romans, chapter 1. And let's look and see what Paul says here, um, because this is very, very important. And um, he says in chapter 1, verse 11, he says, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be uh, established. So when it's God's will, a minister can lay hands upon a person, then they can receive the spiritual gift. In Acts 19, the people prophesied. You, uh, hands may be laid upon you and if it's God's will you can receive a gift of healing or miracles or faith or uh, um, uh, prophecy or word of knowledge word of wisdom discerning of spirits or what have you so one of the reasons for the laying on of hands is for um, the impartation of spiritual gifts now to to give you another scripture in regard to this um, we can look at First uh, Timothy chapter 4 verse 14 where Paul says to Timothy do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery so there were ministers who laid hands upon Timothy and he received a spiritual gift through prophetic utterance and by the laying on of hands and I must remind you that before Mo Moses went on to be with God 
uh, the Lord told him to put his hands upon Joshua, and Joshua received the anointing of wisdom, and he also moved in miracles through the laying on of hands through the ministry of Moses. And so people can receive spiritual gifts through the laying on of hands. Now turn to the book of Acts chapter 13, because we also see that a person could be laid aside and ordained into a supernatural ministry through the laying on of hands. We're talking about the doctrine of the laying on of hands. And we're in Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church in Antioch certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Manian, okay? And, um, um, and, so, uh, and Saul. And verse 2 says, They ministered to the Lord and fasted, and the Holy Spirit said to these prophets and teachers, Separate to me Barnabas and Saul, which is the Apostle Paul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they were sent away. And so these two men, Paul and Barnabas, through the laying on of hands, were set aside, set apart to God, and entered as quit, they quit being prophets and or teachers and became apostles. That's what the Word of God shows that they are later on called apostles. And so a person can receive gifts of the Spirit, charismatic gifts, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, or Doma gifts, Ephesians 4 gifts, through the laying on of hands. And so the laying on of hands can bring a supernatural impartation of the Holy Spirit or Jesus Christ into your life. Now let's take a look at this doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. And again, we're not going to go into great detail uh, on this particular doctrine, but I do want to give you uh, a little bit of the Word of God with regards to it so that you have a basic understanding of it. Because I want to lay supernatural foundations so that you can go into a supernatural life and a supernatural ministry in Jesus. Here's what Jesus had to say in John's Gospel, uh, chapter number 5, and this is what he says in verse 25. He says, Verily, verily, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father has life in himself, so is he given also to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he's the Son of Man. Listen to what he says now. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all they that are in the end of graves shall hear God's voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good to the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. So essentially here, when you're looking at the doctrine of the, uh, of, of the resurrection of the dead, you're looking at basically two resurrections. The resurrection of the righteous dead, those that have repented of their sins, believed in Jesus, born again, forgiven, justified by Jesus, obeyed God, sanctified by Jesus. The resurrect, those who have done good, they receive eternal life. And those that died in sin, when they're resurrected, they're resurrected and they go to the lake of fire. Now, are there other resurrections? Of course. Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from death to life. She was 12 years of age and she was brought to life. Lazarus, after being dead four days, was brought to life. There was a woman who had a double loss. She lost her husband and her only son. And at her funeral, Jesus brought that son back to life. Elijah brought a boy back to life. Elisha brought a boy back to life. Peter brought somebody to life. Paul brought somebody to life. Jesus can speak to you. And you can pray for somebody who's dead. And if it's God's will, they can come back to life. I'm talking about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the life. I'm the resurrection, I'm the life, and Jesus the resurrection, and Jesus the life lives in you. Listen to me carefully. I remember a man, his name was Keith. His wife called for me. He had died. He was prayed for. He came back to life. He talked about being outside of his body in the hospital, and Jesus brought him back into his body, and that was between four and five years ago. Jesus is the resurrection. And Jesus is the life.